So, uh, yeah, Bayer, um, I, I realized this morning, uh, looking over my presentation, I should have put in a slide explaining uh, my company, but you've probably heard, all heard of Bayer. Bayer is now, um, uh, was originally a chemical conglomerate and has, over the years, reorganized itself with mergers and acquisitions to become a pure life sciences company. So we basically have three parts. We have a we have a healthcare area with prescription drugs. Um, probably a lot of you have heard of Cipro, Cipro by the um, uh, Ciprofloxacin, the antibiotic, as an example. Or we have a, cons a consumer uh, health area, aspirin. That you've all heard of aspirin, which was invented by Bayer in 1898. And then we have a crop science division, and we're one of the uh, leading four uh, uh, companies uh, globally in, in crop science. And uh, we help provide solutions for uh, growing crops. And if you go to the oh, next slide, um, we have um, in the crop science division, we are not only um, working in the traditional uh, area of like pest control through chemicals like herbicides or insecticides, but also now uh, developing new genetic traits. And before we release these new genetic traits in the environment, we have to test them very thoroughly according to uh, both the uh, government regulations in the different uh, uh, countries around the globe as also our own, um, what we call stewardship, our own um, standards to make sure we're not releasing any uh, new uh, plants, genetic varieties into the environment because once a plant gets in the environment, it can self-propagate and we lose control of that. So these um, trials that we're conducting, uh, regulated field trials, uh, we have to conduct um, according to strict standards. And this is the first slide, just kind of an a overview of the whole uh, uh, project. So, and a license to operate for the company, of course, is that we have to uh, uh, both comply with these standards around the globe and we also want to have a, um, um, a, a global standard according to how we're operating so that um, we uh, ha have a global quality. Uh, the, the third point here, so the global field trial compliance currently, well not currently, well up, up to through last, done differently in each country. Uh, we have about 12 countries where we are conducting trials going from uh, US and Canada down through uh, Latin America, like Brazil, Argentina, over to Australia, South Africa, uh, about 12 countries in total. And in each country, sometimes they have like an electronic system that they're using that they're not completely happy with, or uh, paper processes, manual processes. And so we ha start off with like a heterogeneous situation, and the challenge is, okay, how can we set up a system that's going to be flexible enough to meet the demands in these 12 different countries because uh, we have countries like um, Argentina has very strict requirements where we have to collect a lot more data than we do, for instance, in, in Canada and the United States is somewhere in between. So every country is a little bit different and the regulations can change every year from year to year. So how, do we, uh, how are we able to adapt these forms for each country on an ongoing basis, and that's how we got interested in iForm Builder. And from the very beginning, we thought this was very promising. Um, so uh, we, um, we integrated the remote data entry for the field, trial fields with the .NET um, uh, web application for managing the data. And then the third part, we, we're talking about the three-part uh, uh, problems we have. Uh, the third part, the reporting, we're using uh, Tableau for visualization of the data. And we're using the iForm Builder API. The architecture of the system overall, we have uh, what you're familiar with on the very right-hand side, uh, the iForm app on the mobile devices, uh, going through obviously the iForm uh, Builder cloud. And then on our end on the server, uh, our data center in Pittsburgh, we have a um, you know, web server, and we have a, a SQL Server 2012 database. 
And then we're using Tableau as a separate uh, landscape uh, as, as a reporting system. And that kind of shows you a little bit of what the GFC system technically is, ASP.NET uh, MVC, and we're using Telerik um, UI. This shows the overall um, workflow in terms of the uh, process. So you s we're starting um, at the very beginning of the, of, of the season, of course, with an empty field with, with nothing growing yet, um, uh, seeding the plants, uh, sowing the seed in the field, uh, watching the plants grow, and then eventually uh, with the harvest, uh, you see the example of cotton there on the right, so we have to document this entire process, and we have to provide, at uh, certain intervals, we have to provide reports back to the government. Uh, for instance, in many countries, uh, we have to report within seven days uh, information of planting, where we've planted, what are the GPS coordinates uh, of the field that we planted at, how much did we plant in that field, et cetera. So what we have is that the two uh, blue boxes on the top, those are basically users out in the field. Uh, we have the field trial researchers and the auditors. The field trial researchers, researchers they're conducting our trials. They could be uh, Bayer employees, but they're often also external cooperators. And so that they're, um, in a sense, we have a, um, a bring your own device model in that sense. If, if they're a Bayer employee, it will be a Bayer device. Uh, we typically have uh, iOS devices. If it's external, it can be iOS or it could be Android, so that flexibility is important for us. And the field trial researcher, um, there's different forms that they have. The, some of the four key forms are, are, are listed up here for planting, obviously, uh, to give all the data about the planting. The observations uh, every few weeks, this, uh, how are the plants growing, how are they flowering, uh, is any um, incident taking place, like, uh, I don't know, sheep coming by and eating the plants or whatever. Uh, and then harvest or termination of the trial. Uh, how much did we uh, collect in seeds? What would, did we do with the seeds after we collected them to make sure we, we just didn't throw them in the ditch? Um, um, that, but they're, they're um, uh, being accounted for. Every, everything we collect is accounted for. And then afterwards, at the end, monitoring after the harvest is done, we have to monitor the field uh, to see if any other plants grow up from seeds that had uh, fallen to the ground by accident and um, until the, there's no more uh, plants coming up. And during this whole process, uh, the field trial researcher is um, uh, submitting forms with the data. And we also have auditors who then come in periodically and they inspect, according to inspection checklist, whether the field trial researcher has actually done what they're supposed to do, have done with the protocols. And they're also using um, uh, I-form um, uh, forms. And how is this all being managed? Well, that's in the center here. Uh, we have first in, in the, the, our, our uh, ASP.NET um, application, we have the, the green, not the green, the yellow box, excuse me, at the, at the left. Uh, the permit data collection. Before we can actually conduct a trial, we have to apply for a government permit. So we're collecting first the information about where the trial is going to be located, where the trial is going to be located at, what types of seeds are we planting, and uh, then applying for the government permits. And then we um, assign, and that's this, the red there, the permit notebook, we assign these permits and notebooks to specific uh, field trial researchers. Now these notebooks, what we call a notebook, is a virtual collection of what, what are going to become um, forms submitted uh, with iForm Builder, form records, that's uh, documenting the, all the stages of the growing process in the field uh, for the trials that are being conducted at a particular location. And we only want, um, well, we want to make sure the field trial researchers are just only um, entering data for the, for the permits and the uh, notebooks that we're uh, specifying. And I, I can show you a little bit later how that works. Uh, then we have, when the data comes back in uh, from the field, we have what we call the, the GFC workbench, where the data is being reviewed by the compliance officer 
So we have a, a facility where we are um, creating, um, uh, we create PDF files of the form records as they come in, and then the compliance officer can review, and if he sees something that doesn't look quite right, he can send that back to the field trial researcher. Finally, after the data is finalized, uh, we can create reports, like the planting report we send to the government, uh, for instance, and then finally, uh, the data is um, uh, available for the dashboard, which is in, in Tableau, which is uh, consisting of uh, country dashboards for each country, and that they can monitor their field operations, and then globally that uh, we can see what's going on uh, between the different countries. The types of data we're collecting, uh, this is kind of a, a, a sample of some of the things, uh, for instance, in the, in the planting form that we have, obviously, we have traditional fields like date fields, like planting date, and we have numerical fields like isolation distance, uh, how far um, away are, are the, um, uh, is, is, is a, the next um, um, uh, field of, 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 of crop plants. Uh, how much seed have we planted, how much seed have we not planted that we had available at the site, what did we do with the seeds that we didn't plant, uh, did we destroy them, did we send them um, back, uh, what do we do? Uh, we collect the uh, GPS coordinates of the polygon um, just by walking physically around the site. We can take pictures of the field, uh, scan barcodes of seed packets, so we know exactly what seed packets are going out um, into the field, and also of um, shipment track, uh, shipments that have been um, received or sent from the site. Signatures we collect at the very end. Um, the field trial researcher signs the form that they send in, and uh, free text comments, and we emphasize in the training that they can speak those if they want. They can use the, the speech-to-text feature of the uh, mobile device. How do we organize the, the profiles in iForm Builder? This is, uh, um, what I'm going to go through is, is I, maybe in a little bit more gory detail some of the, the decisions we made during the project. Uh, our project started in January last year and it's going uh, through the uh, uh, December this year. Uh, we are, um, we've rolled out um, right now to the United States uh, uh, with the, uh, the spring planting season, and as we're uh, going over the next months, we'll, we'll be rolling out uh, to the remaining countries. Uh, we, s we built a, a set of core forms that are the data that we need to collect that's really in common between all the countries. Obviously, planting date or the, the amount of seed that we planted um, is, is, a, is a, a core field. Uh, but there'll be other uh, fields that are not uh, needed for every country, so we left those out of the, the core forms. And for each country, we have a separate um, a profile in iForm Builder to give the flexibility so that the planting form that we have as a core form, that for Argentina or Australia, that the um, compliance officer in that country can actually edit that form and make modifications, add fields, or add even additional forms if they need them, or they can ask us to, which is normally what's been happening so far, uh, to do that. But I'm hoping very much, uh, we're excited about the new <laughs> uh, iForm Builder 2.0 that, uh, that might enable our um, the compliance officers in the countries to much more easily uh, work on the forms. And what we did was, uh, of course, we had to be careful um, that in terms of flexibility, that um, we have ultimate, we have all the flexibility we want to have in terms of creating and changing forms, but if like Australia um, turns the whole uh, data structure that we're collecting upside down compared to what we're doing in the other countries, then uh, we'll have a problem on the back end in terms of the reporting the data structure. So we want to try to keep the program logic on the back end as, as similar as possible. So that's always a balance there in terms of the, uh, trying to be flexible, but not uh, trying uh, not to try change anything fundamentally that we have to do a lot of gymnastics on the back end for each country. And the idea we came up with um, 
in order to facilitate this process where each country can modify their forms, we thought, well, could, we don't want them to just uh, be spontaneously changing the forms that are currently in production and maybe uh, having uh, 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 deleting, deleting the field and not realizing what would happen. We set up a QA and, and, and production profiles for each country to, to differentiate that so that the countries, that they can um, uh, add or change forms in QA, and then when they say they're done, then, then we can replicate that to, to production. And we've been using the I4 Builder uh, mi the migration uh, tool, which has been working very well to migrate forms from one profile to another. Uh, the data structure, uh, we're using the um, API to replicate the, the forms and the option list uh, from uh, basically in the same structure as, as the, uh, the iForm JSON that the data we're receiving. So we, in the SQL Server database, we have that same uh, data structure. And we, uh, uh, if, if somebody changes a form or option list in, in, in one profile in one country, then we have an automatic facility uh, built into our uh, system so that the, um, these changes, uh, the additional fields or additional forms are automatically then uh, replicated in, into our um, system. And we have an endpoint that receives, the, each time a form is submitted, the endpoint, uh, um, our, our SQL Server database receives that and if it detects that there's been something that doesn't know about it, about in terms of a form element, it goes back and fetches that. The, um, yeah, the form records are posted immediately uh, to our database uh, via the uh, um, endpoint, and we immediately create a PDF. Uh, we decided not to use the, uh, the built-in iForm uh, functionality for PDF, but uh, for simpler overall operation in the whole system, uh, we um, uh, built a um, facility for, for uh, building the PDFs, and uh, we immediately create those when we receive the forms. And then uh, finally, for the dashboard in Tableau, we create normalized tables. And this is something that, that uh, I see you <laughs> nodding your head. Uh, we, we had made a decision last year um, in terms of uh, going to normalized tables um, uh, and for each form and subform, and then creating views on top of those uh, to use with Tableau. And so far, it's been um, uh, working very well. Uh, we do a, a language localization, so for some countries, for Spanish, um, Portuguese, and Japanese. Uh, originally, there was no API for fetching the translations that came um, um, if somebody changed something on an iForm builder. So we um, decided to push uh, uh, from our side, from, from, from spreadsheets. Uh, but now that, that API is now available, we're happy to see, and we're uh, going to enable uh, the local countries just to change their uh, translations, and then we can fetch those, and we can use those texts to create the PDFs um, for the form, so that makes it easier um, for creating the PDFs. We have a, a, a data hierarchy, and it'll be a little bit clear while I'm going into this great detail, but. We have, we have, first we have a limit, a level of the permit, which is the government authorization to conduct a trial. And there may be like two to 10 of those per country per year. And then at each location, like a farm, we have a notebook within that permit. And then within, within each notebook, uh, we have a, uh, we can have multiple trials. And the permits and the notebooks, they're being assigned in our .NET um, application uh, to, field trial researchers and the trial IDs, those are actually being collected from, uh, from the f uh, a, a special form called the trial ID setup form. And then we post those into option lists. Um, and this is just kind of a, a little snapshot showing a planting form um, and then clicking on the permit number and you see the option list of different permits that the person is uh, approved to work on. And then this shows um, how we assign a, um, a, a 
a notebook, a uh, permanent notebook to a field trial researcher on our um, uh, web application um, that um, we were able to, to pick out or add a field trial researchers. And then we use the, the API to, uh, to create and, and uh, change or delete the option lists so that then uh, when each particular re field trial researcher goes out in the field, they'll see only those uh, permits and notebooks that they're um, approved to work on. Uh, and we do that uh, by uh, using this uh, uh, key value so that then uh, here, um, you see that there's, in the middle here, there's um, permits uh, like 16957101N, uh, two different permits, and we just set condition values there to, uh, for the, the names of the users, and that works really well. And this was something that we had kind of stumbled into uh, by accident that um, we had originally uh, written uh, a uh, condition value that was where we we, we listed all of the um, usernames uh, in one string, and, and then we, we, didn't, we bumped up against a, a, a 500 character limit, so and we realized we could use this key value, then that uh, solved that problem. Just kind of an, an example of a, of a um, uh, that we've always been able to, whenever we, we've bumped a, a, across an issue, we've always been able to find a solution, either with, with your help or with just kind of our brainstorming. So the system has, has been um, uh, very, very uh, good for us to work with. And here's a couple other um, things that we've implemented. Um, there was a, a request on the, from, our, uh, from the business that the, uh, they want the field trial researcher, if they submitted a form and maybe they, they said, uh, yeah, they're planting corn and then um, they realize, no, no, it wasn't corn, it was actually soybeans, and they want to pull that form back. And uh, we don't want the people to keep the form on the, on the device, just send it in. And how can they do that really easily? And so that was an issue. So we developed a, a recall function. So basically, um, it's a form, and whenever somebody submits like a planting form or an observation form, then and our back end, then we assign a record to them called a recall record for that, for instance, specific planting form. And so that then that, that is, gets uh, assigned back to the user. And so that they, when they uh, sync and refresh, then they get, uh, uh, they can go in the, the, the record view here for the recall form and they see the forms that they've submitted. And then they could go, oh yeah, that specific planting form, I want to uh, change something that I, and then uh, uh, you can't see it down there, but uh, if you just push on done at the very end, then it submits that and then they refresh one more time and then they get their form back uh, to them so that then they can make uh, the small change that they wanted to make. So that's kind of one of the things that they, people wanted to have. Another thing is a status report, which is basically the same as the recall. Um, it, it gives that, those record details uh, the kind of key fields um, in, in, in a, um, a summarized fashion so they can remember, oh yeah, I really did submit that, uh, kind of so they can see that on the fly in the field. Um, and I wanted to explain how the data review works. So once the field trial researcher has submitted the forms, uh, for instance, a, a planting form, the, the, the second form that's here, um, on this screen here, a specific planting record, then the compliance officer can go to that and then in the, uh, the column there that with the, th the third um, blue arrow there, the display PDF, um, there's this little PDF icon there, they can display the PDF and because we've pre-generated, um, we, we generate the PDF files upon the uh, admission, submission that's pr practically part of the endpoint, uh, when they click on that, the PDF comes up immediately or if they want to see all the PDFs that have to do with the trials at that location, then they can click on the second icon there, which we call the trial PDF, which everything is concatenated into one file. So they can see the, um, they can see the planting form, they can see the different observations, the harvest, uh, everything in, in connection. 
And if the compliance officer sees, oh, there's something missing there, um, like I had the comment there, yeah, please correct the planting date, uh, the comp uh, compliance officer can just type in the comment and click on reassign and can reassign it back to the person who submitted it, reassign it to another uh, field trial researcher because the first one is on vacation, or the compliance officer can even reassign it to himself or herself um, if it's something simple they just need to correct. So that's a very nice um, uh, um, interaction that we have there with the, using the API. Um, and here's just a, f a few more uh, 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 comments that um, what we're using, for instance, the API for, we're counting, uh, we're, we're, we're creating the iForm user accounts. So, um, uh, and, and that's in connection with um, the user management in total. So we, we have, of course, we have for the, our web application, we have user accounts. And on the iForm side, there's user accounts, but our, our user management screen integrates both of that together. And so that then we can create together with the web account, the iForm uh, user account. And then we also need to think about, okay, well, what forms do we need to assign to that user? And according to the role, we have field trial researchers and we have auditors, and we, we define form groups for each of those. And we use the form group concept in, in the API to um, assign the, the form groups uh, for that role. Um, the second main point there, yeah, we, we import uh, via API all the images, like the photos, uh, signatures, um, uh, in, into our uh, server in Pittsburgh. So that then we have those available for creating the PDFs or any other purpose um, that we have later also when we um, make the data available in Tableau, that these graphics are also available in Tableau. We count the API calls within uh, G GFC. This, uh, this is keep a um, uh, orientation of, of how much we're using the API. And if we're, it seems like we're doing that excessively, then we can think about how we can optimize what we're doing there. Uh, we've set up a white label uh, that's called Bayer GFC. Uh, we are still in the process of, of testing that. and. I'm, um, I've been getting in contact uh, with, with uh, uh, Manatee Works about setting up a license uh, uh, for that so we can use the barcode scanning facility. And this is a kind of a work in progress. And there was one, uh, I don't know if I, this is, this question has come up with uh, any other project. This kind of interesting, might be interesting to hear if you've thought about this question. Um, there's two fundamental ways of working, at least f from our perspective, our project, that we can either, um, uh, the way we've um, set it up, the way I've described it, is that any user can go and um, any user that, for instance, a field trial researcher can pick up any form and decide, okay, I'm going to um, enter data for this uh, permit and notebook and trial. And they can decide that on a whim. They, don't, um, they have the freedom to do that at any time. And um, they, can, they can enter f data for anything that's allowed from the option. That we, we, we control that through the option list. But the second thing uh, possibility would be instead that we force everybody to, uh, we have a form record system, a form record assignment system, so that we'd actually pre-fill the permit, notebook, and trial ID, and maybe some other information, and assign that to the field trial research to say, okay, these are the forms you need to be filling out. And um, uh, we had kind of, a, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages of both, and we had some very almost vigorous uh, uh, discussions, and finally the compliance officer says, this is just too complicated for us, let's just go with the, with the option list approach, which, we, which is what we ended up with. A lot of discussion. I'm just curious uh, to hear if you've also had thoughts about when it's it's better to do one or the other. Um, we had a couple ideas uh, uh, for enhancements that might be um, interesting. Like if a record is reassigned to a user, it might it would be helpful if they would see that in a different color, like a, I don't know, a red color or whatever. If if they got a record reassigned back to them, that they should 
correct the planting date or whatever. Uh, then the recall and status records uh, reports that I um, described, because for each form that's being submitted, we're sending back um, a status um, form and a, a recall form record. Um, the user has to pull down uh, a, a couple times and has um, some dialog boxes to acknowledge, and it'd be nice if we had a little bit of control over that, just kind of interesting. Another thing is sometimes our notebook names are very, very long, and um, uh, a wrap around for long strings uh, in the record view would be interesting thing. There's just kind of some, some ideas, uh, things that would be nice to have. Um, this is just a, a, a quick view of the Tableau um, uh, dashboard, uh, just at the top level view showing um, uh, where trials are, are taking place, how much acreage, and then you can drill down to to the, um, every level of, of da uh, data of the permit uh, trial notebook below that. And finally, just the overall conclusions that, um, yeah, the, the users really prefer the ease of, of, of use of entry with the uh, um, iPhone Builder to the, the they, really, they really like the approach with iPhone Builder. Uh, and Zirian, you've, you've always been uh, very responsive to us uh, and uh, uh, thankful for that. And this really helped us. Uh, we've been able to resolve every significant issue that's come up. Um, we've learned um, over time it's, it's most efficient to place application, where, where it's most efficient to put the application logic, whether on the iForm side or on our website or, or, or a combination of the both. Um, and it's probably good not to make the logic that's going in between the two too complex to try to keep things simple if possible. And the key advantages we see as our, of, of, of using iForm Builder is that the, the out-of-the-box functionality. So we saved a lot of uh, implementation, and we will in the future save a lot of maintenance costs of not having to maintain uh, mobile apps. The flexibility to change forms quickly, the language localization, and then, then the real-time management of the mobile data uh, that we're able to, through the endpoints, we're able to uh, have a real time. Our, our, our database, uh, our corporate database is, is, is uh, fully in sync with what's happening out in the field. So with that, uh, any questions? Actually, yes. Um, the, the recall form, the basically self-serve, is that pressure from the field team or pressure from kind of the organizers and management above? <sighs> yeah, basically our key users, you know, we're concerned so about that. Guys on the ground say, hey, we want to tell yeah. them Right. Give us the control. Right. Cool. Right. That they feel they have more control over it. Yeah. Yes. Regarding the recall submission, is the submission appending the original submission and going back into the server, or is it adding a separate submission, re referencing back to the previous one that you guys? Did? Yeah, it'll just be replacing the the previous one. Yes. We do keep a record on our back end of of the the, the changes, but. But in terms of the database, it's just overriding. Yes? In the recall, are, you, are they able to just see forms that they just created, or are they able to see excuse me, forms in total that have been submitted? Not only the ones that they've submitted themselves. The, Thank you. Okay. Thank you.